catching up on the on the recording later on um, I, I know that that's quite popular uh, we're incredibly grateful for you joining us and we're very proud to at some point to be able to be, introduce you to the latest member of the of the broken spine family uh, mr casey bailey who presently holds quite a privileged position he's birmingham's poet laureate he's doing some really good stuff in his community uh, we're very excited for him to be here as our special guest and reading for us tonight and to be working with him going forwards. Uh, tonight, I had hoped that everybody would have a copy of this in their hands. Um, I'm sorry that you haven't. We had that printing issue, minor issue. Um, some of you will have yours. Obviously, some of you don't. Um, but from what I can see, they're being warmly warmly received, um, which at the moment is something that's really, uh, really important to me. I've had a tough couple of days, tough 24 hours, and, and seeing them arrive on people's doorsteps today uh, and people being happy with the finished product, it's uh, life-affirming. Um, before I move on as well, um, I want to take a moment to... To say a couple of words about the the sad loss of a of a poetry friend or a gentleman in the poetry community tonight, Di Fry, who who sadly passed away this week after a battle with with poor health. Now, Di and I were not extremely close, but I certainly admired him from afar. Admired his work, his warmth, his engagement in the community, um, and I'm really grateful that he made it to my book launch last summer. Um, he'll be sorely missed, and I'm sure other people will want to, to say something at some point this evening. Um, once again, thank you for everybody. Uh, we're not, we don't do this alone. I'm here with Shante from Reside, and I'm here with Lizzie from Reside. Um, so I'm going to throw over to Lizzie to open things up for us. 
Yep. Hello, everybody, and welcome again. And I'm really glad to see some familiar faces and some new faces. It's always nice to see who turns up to these things. Um, I'm going to just start us off with two of my poems. Um, I'm feeling a bit uh, hay fever -y, so apologies if I have to stop and cough. It's not COVID. I just have very bad hay fever. Um, so the first poem is called I Will Be Air. When the empty jam jars are full of wasp swings and crushed beetles, I will dip my brush into the amber of a crying tree and paint myself flying. Once when my head was held under the sea for too long and up was down, I wondered if I was drinking earth's blood or the tears of God. Now everything sitting restless on the tip of my tongue tastes translucent, like licking a pane of glass or catching hail between my teeth. These words flee me. On a Sunday, I crop my hair to my shoulders over the bathroom sink. The chopped strands clump in the cream bowl like a flattened bunny on the motorway. My head sways under the lightness. And the second poem, well, thank you, <laughs> is a poem I wrote a very long time ago now. Um, when I was in second year of university, Shante will remember me back then, much, much younger. Um, and it's still one, one that I enjoy performing and it's called Sticks and Stones. We are two figures opposite sides of a lake stagnant with icy whispers. Take me for a swim, lose me in the river of the lost and lose me in the deep. We are tasted on Hades lips, sweet eternal loneliness. Touch me with your fingertips, brush my skin against your hips and kiss me sober. I'll buy your time with mine. Clock tick coins for rainy days. Take me back to springs forget-me-nots that would sing of our happiness, warming your skin with sunshine muscle memory of youth. Hold my head between cushions, muffle out what I can't see. You can't stop burning effigies of, of us onto the corners of me. My neck was a chalkboard and your mouth was made of nails. I ignored the sound. So take me back there, lose my soul in the river searching for all time, tuned into your heartbeat fluttering life. Thank you. It's a genuinely beautiful poem. I Thank can't remember much. whether I read that first or if I've heard you perform it or not. It's, um, and, and the S is the, it can't be easy to read. Very hard to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's spit screen in front of your, in front of your laptop. There. <laughs> okay. Um, Next person on my list is Veronica. Are you happy to... I can't hear you at the moment. You, you're on mute still. Hi. <laughs> so I will be reading uh, two poems. Um, the first one is called A Moment on the Causeway. All right. So. There comes a calmness in the air, one I hadn't felt in quite some time. I like to drive with music playing, a time for myself on long drives. And lately, I drive in silence, like another song of my life will begin at any moment. I drive on the causeway path, eastbound, not many other drivers around. On my left, from nowhere, there's a cluster of small birds that fly with me for a while. Sparrows? I'm not sure, but I feel I'm not alone. It's all in the small things, I tell myself. I smile and laugh aloud for no reason other than I think it's funny how a group of tiny birds can be my companions and make me happier than some of my friends have lately. And I want nothing more than to fly away with them. So, <laughs> thank you. And the second one is um, a poem called The Way I Miss You. Remember back to those few autumn months of early morning jogs and flannel shirt days? I find I think of them frequently now and I realize I no longer want to miss you this way. I remember you reaching for me during the night and waking me up with your hands on my hips. Do you remember the way you said my name? Cause I wish I didn't remember any of this. I remember late nights kissing in your car, of you cooking dinner like you did that last night. Do you remember all that we said to each other when we had our big breakup fight? I remember you wanted to leave, but wanted to be friends. And I said, that's hard to do after a relationship ends. Do you remember all the pain in my cries? Because I remember the loss of love in your eyes. Do you remember all the good things we had? Because all I remember now is all that was bad. 
missing you just won't seem to go away and I'm no longer strong enough to miss you this way. Thank you very much, Veronica. Thank you. Is that all you have prepared for us? I, yeah, I can do another one. I have another one ready to we go to. I think we have time tonight and I would like to hear you read again. Oh, okay. Thank <laughs> you. All right. I have one called, um, let me scroll down. It's called When Your Heart Spills Over. Okay. You can spill your heart out over and over. When you need it to spill it most, I will always listen. When it overflows with love, loss, anger, and sadness, let it spill and then fill again, and I will be there to listen. When your heart runs empty and it runs quite dry, I'll pour out my heart, of course, offering to fill yours, draining what is left in mine. So let yourself fill your heart from what I gave from mine, and when it can't contain much more, replenish all it had before and let the levels realign. So always spill your heart out whenever you feel it's time. You can never spill too much to me. For now, I do believe I've spilt all of mine. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, um, where, would we, where would we be able to find your work, Veronica? Anybody who's not familiar with you at the moment? Um, well, I have, um, my most recent publication is a, a poem called Our Women, which the lovely Reside uh, published in their most recent issue. So thank you again. It was amazing. I love the issue. It was absolutely stunning. So you can find a poem of mine in there. And I'm just submitting right now, submitting out there. So yeah, I, I am working on my website. So yeah, I'm new to the publishing scene, so. Okay. Well, we have seven days left before our window slams shut. Oh, okay, so, wonderful. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be hitting that up. Thank you. Yeah. Check out our website for guidelines. Oh, my God, wonderful. Thank you. No problem at all. Welcome all submissions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, moving on. Steve, Stevie, are you ready? Take that drink, put it down. Yeah, am I sound and vision okay? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I've got two short poems about trust. Now, the first one's got a reference to a phone box. And for the younger members of the audience, a phone box was a big metal box with a phone in available for uh, public use. You could pay to go in there. And I I'm walked past a phone box yesterday and I didn't know it was in town. I thought they'd all gone and it. it scared the life out of me when I saw it. I thought I'd slip back inside, you know, a bit good night, sweetheart. Right then, I'll, uh, Alan, we're going to slip back in time, all right. <laughs> it's called Anchored Trust. Before the millions and billions of mobile phones were just a few static immobile ones tied by a curly braided string to a Bakelite pyramid with world-changing rings. Important things, births, deaths, weddings. Some even had their own tables in parkade halls, but most of us had pockets frayed with change and awaited outside these phone boxes for piss-centred calls in boxes big enough to stand or dance or smoke in. It was a time of anchored trust, with promises of station meetings in four-awaited days with nothing between except a carefully written phrase on a slowly chosen card, maybe a mixtape, and always that riddle of reassurance in your familiar green ink inside a kiss-centred envelope. Steve, don't worry, you're the only boy I stay in bed with when the phone rings, because with anybody else, it might be you on the phone. Thank you. Uh, and I... Uh, I do have a I do have a, a mobile phone, cell phone, and I've noticed how lots of young poets store their work on phones and read from them. I thought I can do that. So if I can find it, I think uh, have we got it? Yep, I've got it. Here it is. Yep, and it's a it's a poem about a bad ventriloquist. Um, right, poem for a bad ventriloquist. 
they'd like to say is magnificent poet, the best. He'd like to say he's fab, the best, the most magnificent poet, but he just can't utter those words without spilling the wrong ones. And it comes out that he's sad. He's the rest. He's a host agnostic, know it. And he stays with a slit in his face, letterbox mouthed, avoiding the labial words where the lips meet. He can't gesticulate to give help with his right arm or my back. He just has the left left to fool the world with sinister intent. He swerves my head. He opens these wooden jaws with animated deceptive sentences. He puts words into my mouth while he looks like a dummy. I blink to his command. My eyes roll to his pushing fingers. Breathing life into me, not with lightning bolts or shocks, but words, poems, voices thrown my way. Then folds me, double upped, hamstring, zipped inside my padded hold all. Where's he gone? Always good value. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. It's nice to know I'm good value. The poems aren't very good, but I'm a, I'm a poet who gives good value. You know, I, I, I won't ask you what your mixtapes were, Alan. It's a bit no, no. <laughs> I, I nearly dug some mixtapes out the other day. Somebody was asking for a bag because I, I don't know why, but they'd come across a come across a, 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 a stereo that played them, and they were looking for some old ones. And I had lots when I used to work in a car park. I spent my life making them, listening to them. Mm -hmm. Where might people find your work, Steve? Was it a YouTube channel? Yeah, I um, I haven't got any pamphlets. I'm in quite a lot of anthologies and publications and stuff. Uh, uh, Steve Harrison YouTube. Uh, so Steve Harrison Poet on YouTube. I think I said last week, if you keep back copies of Welling, uh, Weatherspoon's News... Uh, autumn 2018, which is not too bad, quarter of a million publication. <coughs> that's good value, because that's free. And um, I don't know if you've seen any of those uh, emergency poet books, the manuals. I think so. Uh, this one. This sort of, this sort of thing. Oh, yeah. There's a whole mixture of poems about healing and getting better. I've got, I'm, I'm in a couple of those. Excellent. But Excellent. individual, no, I haven't got a pamphlet out or anything. So, uh, are you putting anything together? Um, can, yeah, kind of, yeah. I've done it in the past, yeah. But it's just trying to get a theme or it's mm -hmm. that, it's put them all together. Or am I better off putting 20 minutes worth into a little show almost, you know, so it's a 20 long. 20 minute piece of spoken word. We'll see. I just enjoy reading and writing. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, if we're going to move on, the next um, person on my list would be David. David Butler. I'm beginning to think you don't like me, Adam. That's what twice in a row you put me immediately after Steve, and Steve was such a hard act to follow, it's just unfair. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for the invite. Also, thanks to um, to Lizzie Kemble and Lucy Orr because they picked uh, one of my flashes to go up the Golden Bow, uh, or the Golden Bond, I should say, which was really nice on, on the Broken Spine. Uh, so, yeah, how do you follow Steve Harrison? And I thought, okay, maybe you've never heard in, in this particular session a poem in Irish. So, with your permission, here's a poem in Irish. Hey. It's called. Lasser Chwila. Lasser Chwila is a goldfinch, so it's kind of a spring poem. Lasser Chwila. A chiol tor e'r ochr yewra gyal i'r y chotel data mar carnival i dy fwng chli bwy y staig fil yarig po maerig bin la modern arig a ila ffon co wil di yewa ffon agus aber dy ghwn bwa feich co even is a ta an law feich co bwn is a ta an dwl ro and just in case you didn't get all of that, here's a quick gloss of what it means. Goldfinch. Airy musician, bright mummer, in your coat multicoloured as carnival, 
in your yellow sleeves and red mask as merry sweet as a May morning, wandering poet, where's your hurry? Stay and sing your victory hymn. Look how delightful is the day. See how durable is nature. Kind of loses in translation, but there we go. <laughs> um, I, I just do three poems in total, so that's one. Uh, I always associate the goldfish with goldfinch, I should say, with my uh, with my mother. She was a bird watcher. She uh, she died twenty years ago in July, um, and so the next poem is also in memory of my mother. Now, uh, one of the last things we did, she, she got a cancer diagnosis. We still were walking the dog down a very big park here called the Phoenix Park and it was late autumn. And this is a memory, it's entitled Leaf Storm. Some days after the diagnosis set time, a death watch beetle ticking, you set out undaunted for the park, your time of year, air cold as water, the trees touched with fleeting majesty. As we rounded a beach copse, a puckish wind stirred up and like Dante's fugitives, drove all about a streaming leaf storm, shoal dense and endless, brass after brass, chattering, shearing in great murmurations, showing there is a raw grandeur in letting go. And then the, uh, the final one I'll read, Sometimes you get a really, really nice surprise. And this happened in January. A friend of mine just said, uh, congratulations for, uh, you have a poem in Staying Human. I said, oh, I don't. Do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I found out that I actually have a poem in, in Staying Human. And, you know, the publisher wasn't contacted. I wasn't contacted, but here it is. So I'll, I'll give it an L read. Uh, it's called, And Then the Sun Broke Through. A sea of jade and muscatel, the sky gunmetal. Landward, the storm pretending birds, white lit, rising wild contours of wind, uplift to tilt at the raucous crows. This is how it is to live, the ticker tells, looping the floor of the newsfeed. Somewhere, an outrage, an airstrike. Somewhere, a politic withdrawal. This is how it is to live, the wind blowing the charcoal of crows' feathers, the rent in the clouds. Oblique times beating sudden ochre out of a sudden ocean. So there we go. Thank you very much. I love the silent clapping. That silent clapping is awkward, isn't it? <laughs> it is awkward. I noticed that Veronica has this down. She's done plenty of these Zooms, hasn't she? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Um, where might you find your work, David, with the exception of in the Broken Spine journal oh, okay. on the Broken Spine's website? Well, yeah. I've, uh, I have a collection coming out with Dira Press uh, this September. Dira Press is an Irish crowd. They brought out my last collection, um, All the Barbaric Glass, about three years ago. And Liffy Sequence is coming out with them in August, September, sometime around then. But if you don't want to go into uh, collections, I know. I mean, a fair whack of small uh, literary magazines here, there, and yonder. So some of them will come up if you Google, I suppose. <laughs> is, is there a theme for your new collection, your upcoming one? Yeah, it's entitled Liffey Sequence, and a lot of it just follows the Liffey, which runs through Dublin, and it looks at the, uh, the history and the culture, and it takes a theme of dispossession. So some of it is about uh, homeless people, or there's a drug rehabilitation centre, and some of it is about um, the traditionally dispossessed, the, you know, the various populations, the return from war. So that's the basic theme running through a lot of the new connection. Okay, thank you. We'll keep an eye out for that. Quick we'll question for you, Alan. Uh, if I was to submit a poem in Irish with a gloss, would you be interested for Broken Spine or is it purely English? No, um, we would be happy, I think, to publish Irish alongside English. I think that. The oh yeah, that's what I mean with the English. English. Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't expect. Um, I wouldn't expect to, to, to would, do anything else. You wouldn't be the first person who would sense us just a non-English poem without it. Um, I've, I've received a couple of them this week. So, without so, translations. Uh, yeah, without. Okay. The translations. <laughs> and and in languages that I I don't speak with translations as well. Um, and sort of apprehensive because I don't have any sort of grasp 
other languages. Sure, yeah. And yeah, what yeah. I'm putting out. <laughs> but yes, definitely it'd be something. And, cool, yeah. okay. and, and hopefully, um, by the sound we get to Ellie later on, uh, we might even hear some of those dual language poems of hers that she knows I like. She's smiling. She's got something planned. I'm stalling because I'm waiting for Morag to appear. She's not with us yet, but we're at the half-hour stage and she's not made it. Um, so I've got a little bit of a, something to say. Um, thank you again to everybody for tuning in beyond this Zoom. So anybody who might be watching on Twitch or might be watching later, we owe uh, a special nod to Ben, Ben McCurry or, or Tiger Bomb stream who's handling our, our Twitch stream for us. Um, if you're able to, there is an opportunity over on Twitch to, to leave a little uh, tip in the jar uh, that helps to the, the running costs for all them things. So we're always grateful if anybody's happy to either tip there or or buy us a coffee or if you want something back for your money, you can go and buy a, a PDF on the website. They're, they're just as cheap and just as useful. Um, and, and we really appreciate it. Um, Ben's gaming stream would have been tonight and uh, we've shifted that because Sunday is my birthday and I still haven't had any cards from any of you and I'm rather disappointed so if we get on if we get on Moonpig tonight yeah yeah don't believe any of you <laughs> okay um, um, I also want to take this opportunity to to thank everybody who's already um, pre-ordered a copy of Stuart's chat book. Um, it's a sensational collection of poetry. Um, I sent an email out to the people who subscribe to our website and I'm going to put that together as a blog post because the advanced praise is, it, it's, um, well, we knew it was a special collection when we read it. Um, and when Stuart was talking about looking for a home for it, I sort of jumped on him because I, I, he's a fabulous poet. Um, and it would have been wonderful to have him here with us tonight. But uh, rather unfortunately for us, uh, not so for him, he lives on top of a mountain near the Rockies and he has no internet connection for this type of thing. Um, so with that in mind, um, I'm going to read, I'm going to read four poems tonight. I've got four planned. None of them are mine. Two of them are Stuart's, and I'm going to read two old favourites, if that's okay. Um, Stu's book is available again for pre-order on our website. I'm going to give you a taster of them, and then we'll jump back into everybody else. How's that? Yeah. And you'll all be fed up of listening to me by the end of the day. Okay. Um, this is a poem uh, from Stuart's Stuart book. It's called Cat. On my way to kill myself, I met a very friendly cat. So I turned around. We're all decomposing slowly. So that is of some comfort. We are all a million dying stars. So that is of some comfort. And that is Cat by Stuart. Blew me away. Genuinely blew me away. Um, he has this ability to take the, the most ordinary, the most mundane and, well, meta is the word, I think, isn't it? <clears throat> I'm also going to read to you, I shan't read that because I don't know who's watching and it's got a cuss word in it. Um, this is called Poem About Everything. A little bit more of the same. Gives you a really good idea of what Stuart's about. When the comet finally hits and the glaciers melt away, like unanswered equations on a blackboard, and we know then for certain that we are going to die, I will tell so many people that I love them. Their fat, beautiful hearts will explode. And as the sun sets, a bruised socket, and we can finally see the sky is falling, I will turn to you to tell you for the first time and the last that I loved you most of all. There's a lot of um, 
<laughs> very emotive faces. That's really pleasing. It's quite strange to get that sort of reception back from somebody else's work. I'm rising on his coattails a little bit, I think, aren't I? For some levity. This isn't something we do with the Broken Spine very often. When I was 15, 14, my dad took me to go and see John Cooper Clark. <clears throat> so I'm going to read one of John's poems, Dr. Clark's poems, from his most recent collection. Can you see I'm using a lamp here? That's how bad my eyesight is. I shan't tell you how old I am going to be this Sunday. <clears throat> Forgive me, because I might stumble over this. I'm going to try my best to read it, as Mr. Clark would. But we don't normally do these rhyming poems. But I wanted to change things up a little bit. This is called The List. A rational dream, a bucket of steam, a rivet in peace in Heat magazine, a gay baby in Bethnal Green, none of the above. I've ever been seen. Chinese cheese, African skis, technical term for the back of our knees. Developers embracing trees, an argument with each side agrees. A sergeant major saying, please, you won't find any of these. I think that I shall never see that developer hug that tree or a pussycat swimming in the deep blue sea, the feminist hooker who splits the fee. The best things in life that come for free. These things remain unknown to me. The pugilist without a fist, the fantasist without a tryst, the onanist without a wrist, the journalist who isn't pissed all of the above exist on the list of shit that don't exist i don't think i've ever met a state nurse with a private jet a presbyterian bernadette a bucky wiping out all debts returning unsuccessful bets and try and try and try to forget that won't necessarily get those foam rubber castanets the health inducing cigarette maybe one day not yet Kosher ham, vegan spam, a virgin, virgin bride with a double pram, a chocolate teapot, a plastic pan, a nylon kettle, a girl named Stan. If I can't find them, no one will. Wow. And breathe. And good. breathe. Good job. Great job. That was tough. That last line's a killer. <laughs> I'm going back again to when I was 14. I think it's got something to do with when I'm aging. I think that's what it is. 1997, I started doing my GCSEs. That dates me. Right? So anybody who's got anything about the maths-wise, you can work it out for yourselves. That's when I started doing my GCSEs. Back then, I'm an English teacher now. Back then... Um, what was taught on the English curriculum was very different to what's taught now. It's quite white now. It's quite old fashioned. I think it's got something to do with Mr. Gove in 2010. But I was fortunate enough to be introduced to a whole world of poets. One of those poets was um, one of the Mersey Beat, Adrian Henry. I'm not going to read the poem that was in that anthology from my GCSEs, but I am going to read the opening poem to one of the best collections um, that I know exists. The Mersey Sound... The anthology of work from Adrian Henry, Roger McGough, and Brian Patton. The opening poem is called. No, it's not. The opening poem is called Tonight at Noon. For Charles Mingus and the Clayton Squares. Tonight at noon, supermarkets will advertise three pence extra on everything. Tonight at noon, children from happily families will be sent to live in a home. Elephants will tell each other human jokes. America will declare peace on Russia. World War I generals will sell poppies in the streets on November 11th. The first daffodils of autumn will appear when the leaves fall upwards to the trees. Tonight at noon, pigeons will hunt cats through city backyards. Hitler will tell us to fight on the beaches and on the landing fields. A tunnel full of water will be built under Liverpool. Pigs will be sighted, flying in formation over Walton. And Nelson will not only get his, arm, his eye back, but his arm as well. White Americans will demonstrate for equal rights in front of the Black House. And the monster has just created Dr Frankenstein. Girls in bikinis are moonbathing. Folk songs are sprung by real folk. Art galleries are closed to people over 21. 
poems get their poets get their poems in the top 20 politicians are elected to insane asylums there's jobs for everyone and nobody wants them in the back alleys everywhere teenage lovers are kissing in broad daylight in forgotten graveyards everywhere the dead will quietly bury the living and you will tell me you love me tonight at noon i hope you enjoyed So that's me. And if I'm going to move on, um, Sarah would be next on my list. Are you ready to go, Sarah? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to um, give my voice a rest now. Despite being old enough to remember phone boxes, I am actually reading off my phone. So I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle, Steve. Uh, the first poem I want to read is a short one called Bruised Buds. This morning in the garden, the Japanese maple blew over. Ceramic smashed on gray patio, my rolled dal rose battered and bent. The maple lay untouched, undamaged, returned to standing with barely a glance. I plant a stake firmly in the drying ground, tie budding stems upright and hope for the best. And the second poem I'm going to read uh, was actually in the last issue of Reside um, magazine. So thank you for a lovely issue. It is called uh, Diamond Diva. There's only for, 10 of us on. Oh. For uh, Diamond Diva, for Adelina Patti, 1843 to 1919. Clear-cut eyes glint in spring sun as her single gauge carriage chugs backwards at a Swansea station. The bowed arches bow farewell to a formidable force. This diminutive fairy bird, unyielding still, trills lightly, brightly, under weight of impresario's due expectation. Prattling parrot's insinuations bring neither simper nor apology to those ruby lips. Buying instead a castle to hide her earnest paramour behind flint dark night, she etches love hearts through Welsh valleys with rivers of trout. Audience eyes seek to peel her costume open as coloratura sparkles reaching under skin and two peelers from Bow Street Station pace the stage in anticipation of a violence that her philanthropic self has warded off. Her steely stilettos stride across slick garden cobbles, now gliding past the marble bust, up onto timeless stage, and turning to face soaring velvet sweeps, we hear her unleash a woman's most disarming weapon, her voice. Um, yeah, I would recommend anyone who's interested in Interesting Victorian women research Adelina Patti. She was fascinating. Tell us more. Go on, we've got uh, time. Tell us more. So she, I think she was Italian originally, and she saw some of her early, should we say, her the people she looked up to got ripped off, basically, and ended up making loads of money and spending it all. So she became obsessed with financial security. And she went through a period where she insisted on being paid in jewels because she didn't trust money as a concept. Oh. Um, and she had three husbands and the last one she bought a castle for outside Swansea. And she got, yeah, in the Brecon Deacons. And she, she had a, a railway line built all the way up there so that she could get on her carriage at her castle and go all the way to Covent Garden without ever having to change carriage. So she's a, she's a really interesting woman. And in I think there's still a structure in Swansea somewhere that originally came from her castle. It was like, I think the Winter Gardens or the Winter something or other. And, and yeah, really, really interesting woman. But yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, just popped into interview there is, is Casey. So just a quick hello to Casey. Um, 
You've missed me tripping over John Cooper Clark rhymes. I don't know whether I'll do that again. Um, I, I, can you hear me? Yeah, I think you should do the John Cooper Clark rhymes again. You reckon? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I'll try and find another one, perhaps, towards the end. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, next person on my list um, is, is Emma. Emma Lee, uh, who was who was published in issue one of the Broken Spine, or edition one, I should probably say. Um, I think that's what we call them. I don't know why we call them editions instead of issues, but we do. What are you going to read for us tonight, Emma? Yeah, I've read previously from my collection The Significance of Address. And in it, I've got three dress-related poems. I've read two of them at previous Broken Spine Evenings. So I thought I'd round this off by reading, reading the third. Uh, I was involved in a panel talking about artistic responses to the refugee crisis being hosted at Leicester Cathedral a few years ago. And at the time, it was also hosting an art installation from Arabella Dorman called Suspended where she suspended clothes that refugees had left discarded on the beaches of Greece. And behind it set a light going and the light changed from sort of yellow to represent the sun and white light to represent the moon. And some bright spark in the audience stuck his hand up and said, why do they discard their clothes? Why don't they wash their clothes and reuse them? So this is how a dress lost its sparkle. Why did they discard their clothes on the beach? He repeats as if another asking will adjust the answer to one he wants to hear. He thinks mothers should launder their own children's clothes. He's not placated by the answer that discarded clothes are washed, dried and recycled for the next boatload, for the next and the next. Above him is Arabella Dorman suspended discarded clothing, gathered from beaches held by wires and illuminated by a spherical lamp that alternates between yellow and bright white light, sun and moon. The clothes are flat, no longer needing three dimensions to cover bodies. Among them is a long sleeved ankle length pink dress to fit a five-year-old covered in a layer of gold balls a special occasion dress that sparkles as the light changes, a dress that doesn't warm on cold nights, that shows dirt and sweat, that absorbs salt water and fears, that if pulled over a mouth would hide the bit lip that stops tears. It won't launder without soap, and what does its wearer wear while it's washed? A closer look reveals the tired mark of salt, an obstinate rusty stain, mementos no one wants to keep. And then a change of mood for this one. A few years ago, a couple split up, which is yeah, a sad thing to happen. And he decided he wanted to win his girlfriend back. But instead of going to serenade outside her bedroom window, and he was a professional musician, so it wasn't as if he was going to be catawalling or singing appallingly. He thought he'd set himself up in city centre in Bristol and run a social media campaign. It didn't quite go to plan. This is how Rapunzel ends. He calls his girlfriend Rapunzel after the girl in the tower was nothing to do except clean and sing. She falls in love with the first person she sees who doesn't look like her imprisoner. He says she broke his heart and he wants her back. He sets up a piano on a patch of green outside the council offices near one of the city's busiest streets. He puts up boards urging passers-by to like and support him on social media, an action that asks people to take sides, preferably his. She's immune to emotional blackmail. This isn't a fairy tale. He wasn't her prince. Thank you. Thank you very much, Emma. Have you um, have you got a history of, of writing short story or, or prose? Yes, <laughs> guilty. 
<laughs> I haven't um, sent any to the broken spine yet. But <laughs> please do. We, we open again. I think at the, the first of the month. Um, but there is, there is a, a a very. The narrative can be found in your poems. I think definitely there is a, a real nurse story there, and you can sort of picture that. Um, poetry can be sometimes full of metaphor and simile and all them things and left in the eye of the beholder, can't it? Whereas yeah. I think yours gives us so much more than that. And, and you can see the parallels, or I certainly can, between those and your poems and, and, and pieces of prose. Um, I'm going to ask you, where will people find your work? And then I'm going to give Sarah the opportunity to answer the same question because I forgot to ask. So, so go on, Emma. Where, where might yeah. people find your work? My book, The Significance of Address, is available from Arachne Press. And tomorrow I'm also doing a reading as part of the States of Independence Festival being hosted by De Montfort University. And it's virtual this year, so anyone can tune in. Just Google States of Independence. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Sarah, I'm, I'm sorry for... Uh, I got okay. excited when I saw Casey's face of fire. I wanted to say hello and I just didn't ask. So well, where, I mean, where might be find your work? Well, that poem I'd read was, uh, as I said, in Reside, and I'm also in the issue that's just gone out of Broken Spine uh, and in Abridged, but I'm I'm also relatively new to this. So uh, Are you I work on putting something together. Yeah, I mean I have the beginnings of something, but it's not there yet. So okay. Not ready. Okay, dokie. Um, Emma has read, which brings me to to Matthew. The first time Matthew read our opening night, I said that Matthew reads the gravitas, and then he didn't come back last month. <laughs> Pressure. Yeah, again, no, now, though. <laughs> gravitas. <laughs> You know, if you say that, then that's that's huge, huge pressure. I, I, I didn't say it this time. I said it the first time. Remember? <laughs> I, know, I know. I know. True. Um, yeah. Obviously, it's been a very hard week um, for me personally, and for lots and lots of people. It was very, very, very sad to hear about Di's passing on uh, Monday. And of course, um, I knew him, and I also produced his book, his first ever chat book in uh, March. Um, the process had to be brought forward and it was done very, very, very quickly because of him being very, very ill. Um, his chat book should have been out in October. Um, instead, it was done over about five days. Um, everything, you know, the proofing, the testimonies, the construction of the book, him checking um, over it. So. Um, for me personally it was a very um intense process and very 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 sad you know i obviously spoke to him as well and he knew that he obviously he um he was very 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 ill at that point so yeah it was an incredibly difficult process and um what what i would really really um appreciate actually doing alan is reading a couple of his pieces here uh, because I, I i think uh as you'll see, his work is very, very powerful. Um, and I think it's a very, very good, a very good time really to read some of his poems. So I'm going to start on the first one. Um, Storm, no fear. The storm song hammers green hills. The, the tempest was wrath. The sky takes a primordial breath as hard rain washed the colour from my eyes. Clothes were peeled from skin as firebolts struck in falling rain. An elemental spirit is risen, lit blue white against stormed sky. Okay, so the second piece is called Silence. And I, I you know, I have to find a very, very powerful uh, poem. And it's a poem that's currently following me constantly. Uh, a lot of the words and, and phrasing is um, literally as, you know, as I go about my day, I work, 
this poem is, is very, very, very much haunting me. Okay, so this is silence. Silence, slow my personal terrors. In a raw instant, all truth is faced alone. Listen, hear fading Babel, a peculiar auricular quality. Quiet monks and a photon crowns, hymns unuttered, always seeking. Light craves a darkness, silence the wide horizon, face the void, undone. Thank you. It's very, very powerful stuff, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. And 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 really want to say, I mean, in this public forum, congratulations for, for putting the work in that you put in on, on Dave's work and, and giving him that gift. Um, where, where can we pick it up? Where can we get it? Um, okay, so you can you can purchase it um, on uh, well, it's it's on Amazon, um, and it's five pound uh, ninety nine. It's it's prose and uh, poetry, and what what we did was we we really really focused on the artwork, um, and we we really really focused on his best uh, pieces. However, I have since seen. Um, equally fantastic pieces, so I, I think it. I think at some point it will be definitely, definitely worth having a second chat book. Um, but you know that's that's not something we're obviously thinking thinking um, you know um, about currently because obviously it's a very difficult time for his wife and son. Um, but it would be great if we can see further work from him. I mean, he is very, very widely published. Obviously, he was in Reside. Um, which uh, Lizzie, Lizzie is obviously an editor for, and um, you know lots and lots and lots of other presses. But I think what we need to see is his work in one place, so work in two uh, places, two separate books. Um, so that that is something that I would really like to do. Um, but at this stage, obviously, um, you know it's it's been a terrible week. Um, so. It's it's been great really to just come here um, on a Friday. That was that was a a personal aim really to to come here and just read some of his work and just pay a tribute. But it's it's great actually to see other people paying tribute. Um, uh, Paul Paul Brooks on Twitter has done three days worth of tribute, you know, which is absolutely fantastic for his uh, wife and his son. Uh, I'm, you know, and the comments as well the comments that people have made, um, you know, obviously you, Alan and Lizzie, Paul, loads and loads and loads of other people. So yeah, it's just just a, just a privilege to be able to read his work. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that sometimes Twitter can be uh, an unfriendly place, but when yeah. something like this happens, it's uh, really nice to see the, the poetry community acting for, for good. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been times in recent memory where it hasn't, and, um, and this last week, they certainly come together and supported each other. And, uh, yeah, I think I think with um, Twitter, and I know with I know that we've we've obviously talked about this before, haven't we, Alan? Yeah. Uh, pe people people stress obviously the really difficult stuff on on Twitter, but um, on social media, there's so much great stuff happening, but it tends to get completely overlooked um, amongst like awful awful arguments and awful conflict. Um, but you know, I I personally feel Twitter can be you know a real force for good, and that, um, and you see people, for example, like Dai, who perhaps didn't go through the conventional route of getting his work out there, you know, really really use social media and actually achieved um, a lot within three years. You know, I mean, he only started writing three years ago, but because he really really. Um, I guess he really sort of um, embraced Twitter, social media, you know, Instagram. Um, yeah, I mean, his uh, work is very, very fortunately out there. Thank you. Thank you again. Cheers. Cheers, Alan. No problem. Um, Elizabeth. Haram, that is. 
Can you hear me? There we are. Me? You. This Elizabeth. <laughs> that Elizabeth. How okay. are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm not so bad at all. In a tough couple of days, but we're getting through it. Tonight yeah. is important to me. Tonight is important. I wasn't sure whether I was going to be here or not. Um, we had team on standby to take over and and, and run things smoothly, but um, I didn't want to miss it. Sorry for the loss. I'm glad to see you, and I. <laughs> it feels healing to be here. It, it always is, feels that, healing to me to come to. Yeah, definitely. Everybody. I think we all need these moments of light, don't we, sometimes? So that's why I've changed things up a little bit tonight, and I'm doing some rhyming poems and some silly poems. Yeah, it's good. Let's see what we need. Got we need us. silly poems sometimes. We need just things that sound good to our ears and not horribly sad. So wh- I'll do my best ready? not to do the horribly sad tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to cry either. Promise. Cross my heart. Okay. And I was on time today, so I, things are things are looking up. <laughs> um. I was trying to figure out what to read and then hearing you say like maybe Ellie will do some bilingual poetry. I think I should just do that. So um, I have a few books here. This is my one um, self-portrait. This is the one I wrote for Frida Kahlo um, of ecrastic poetry of, of about 50 of her paintings. And then I've sent, and that was with Cephalo Press, that one a year and some ago. And then I have a new uh, manuscript that I'm going to start looking for a home for um, and so and I'm I'm really excited the self-portrait book the Spanish version of it which is called Autoretrato is going to be published um, at a univer- at like the state university in Costa Rica in their catalog um, so that's very very exciting and I'm hoping someday I get to go to Costa Rica to, to do that so I just figured I picked out some Frida ones and I love reading these, you know, writing for Frida is kind of like one of my favorite things. And um, I love her. I love her art and I love everything about her. And I, I share so much with her in my mind um, and our experiences are similar despite me being a gringa and her being Tijuana Mexicana Alemania. So I'll just read a few. This one's called Hurt Comes in Pairs. There is a woman of the dirt and another, two nudes in the earth, just me and my sister. Look how, look how she coils into my belly asking for forgiveness. I like to see her writhe like a worm. And I step on her sometimes to remind her of her smallness and how it feels to die. And yet she eats of my stomach and I keep her alive. We are family after all. The family is not good meat. It can kill you if allowed to fester such as this. And if such meat is left unattended, such as this near your spouse's mouth, he might eat her alive with utter delight and leave none for anyone else. He will be filled with the protein of her, her red-celled goodness. Meanwhile, you are anemic, you are weak and breathless. You faint walking to the bathroom, healing at the waist while the while her loin resides in the mouth of a greedy king. He is kneeling at her waist. Who do I tell this to? When no one has prepared any dinner for me, y el olor de la carne ya no lo soporto. I paint myself with very short hair and I go to sleep with my monkey. That's one. And then this one actually I gave Diego For those of you who don't know Frida as well as I do, Diego Rivera was her very famous husband, the muralist. Um, They had very tumultuous up and down relationship, very, very loyal and in love with each other, but a lot of conflict and affairs and um, just a lot of heartache and heartbreak, but they kind of remained loyal through it all also. So this one is actually in Diego's voice about his very famous poem, The Flower Cellar, with the woman with the calla lily bunch, which you may be seen, it's called Flower Cellar. On the asphalt, I go to Acapulco, past the rubble, burn tires, señales del agua, no potable. A family, a girl, their roses, tantas calas, white pinafore, white linen. I can smell her youth changing over to woman. The burro tied, the fiat parked, 
I walk across the black tar flat to ask cuánto cuesta una docena. Me dice, para usted, señor, solo 150. Miracles, these flowers. To my wife, I get down on one knee, tell her, eres toda, completamente toda para mí. But the girl by the road was in white, her hair tight behind the nape, her arched neck like a child. With the bouquet of kalas, I cannot taste these offerings, yet the existence of her beauty hangs like an odor of me wanting her. And then here's one um, that does kind of show the deep loyalty and love they had. This one was about a self-portrait of her and him. It's called Lo Que Somos, What We Are. Somos la cosa que volaría hacia el sol. Falls back charred and broken to the earth, quemado. The thing which evokes the tantalizing jaguar makes a trap, hides the bone and eats it himself. Casado as el cazador. So many times I lost you as my lover. So many times the way my heart came out of my body as you went to her side. Las mujeres de la vida are like food to you. They make you full, they make you strong. So excellent for your health. Look how robust and older. We are the men of jovial pride. I am a man, I could have been, I long to be. For I too would have fallen in love with me, danced with women half my age, felt their lithe arms around my waist, turned their chins to the moonlight to kiss them, to use them. I cannot escape you. Look at how we have become the same thing, this intertwining of the arteries, the operation to separate our skulls, our zippered torsos at the seams must kill us. Ancient freak couple, decrepit and broken, my whole stupid life, paloma tuya, volando arriba en el cielo para siempre. Diego Rivera, you were always near the wheelchair. You were my legs, my strength, my heart, and I, your one and only. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> Thank you. I and, think you've, um, um, you've made a fan in Veronica. I can, I can see she looked like she was getting yeah, quite emotional there, listeners. <laughs> Thank Excellent you. Um, I I, I've that. seen that follow-up collection. I've seen that follow-up. It, it's a marvelous, a marvelous collection. And yeah. If if we were in a position to 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 work with you, then we would. So if it doesn't find a home elsewhere, it might well come back for the broken spine. Okay. We'll see what happens. We'll in keep in touch. And I my my class book is out. Um that's exciting. I got my copies of it and they look beautiful. And then my um this other book that was um this was my book called Was It Rape? And it was um a victim of Twitter um horror um about a year ago. And I lost the publication at the press it was at, and it's now out again at Femme Salve, which is um, an offshoot of our Animal Heart Press. I'm very, very happy that it's, you know, it's been resurrected because, you know, it's hard to have your book be silenced again, especially when you're talking about sexual abuse and being silenced when it happened, and then to have your book about it be silenced because of issues with that as well felt just so wrong. So I'm thankful to Amanda and Beth for um, giving it a home again. It's a, an honourable mission what they're doing at what you're doing at Femme Salve is to resurrect books exactly. and breathe new life into them when when Yeah, so we we happen. are a book book res on a book rescuing mission for for feminist titles, but you know we we consider anything that has kind of lost its home due to no fault of the author where the press goes dark or there's a there's infighting or the press treats you horribly or some you know something goes straight to hell. Check us out at Femme Salve. Um, we're on Twitter, and it's, on, it's yeah, or get in touch with me. We've we've rescued quite a few so far, so, so excellent. Doing our work. What's that? I said congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Alan. Great to see you, Casey. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Excellent. 
It's your time to shine, sunshine. Lovely. Thank you very much. So uh, picking up on um, maybe some of the discussion that was occurring while I was putting the little man to bed, I will, I'm, I've been turning around what I'm going to do to read some happier poems. Um, so bear with me. Um, the first poem is called Two Swings. And Two Swings is from a collection that is published with Burning Eye um, very soon. It's coming out in June called Please Do Not Touch. And I wrote it because um, there were quite a few um, quite doom and gloom poems about growing up where I grew up uh, in the collection. And I read Caleb Femi's Poor, and it reminded me that even growing up where we grow up, which isn't always great, there is still magic and happiness in those places. So I wrote this poem, it's called Two Swings. And they will not hold hands. Instead, they will let little fingers hang intertwined. In this bond, they will keep the time he said, I don't know, man, you're special. And the time she said, yeah, maybe not all boys, just most. Between this finger link and his black Air Max 95s brushing along the side of her white Air Force Ones, they will hold a phenomenon that breaks every rule of this place. They will wrap it warmly in black tracksuits, dip it in honey, coat it in demerara sugar and rock it back and forward on these swings under midnight sky. Cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, this next poem is also from that collection and it's called Caged Concord. And those of you who know the work of Gregory Porter uh, will know the songs uh, Be Good and Concord. And this poem is inspired by both of them and um, a desire to not let cages hold us back. Lions are made for cages, she said. She told me to be good. I brush my mane to impress a world that will never hear the lyrics of my song, only the roar of my vocal. I wear assumptions to every single party, but apparently these aren't red carpet rags. I avoid the cameras as much as they avoid me, allowing myself to believe it was me who started this. I shouldn't be here or there or any of the parties where my invite is spat through bread knife teeth. I am no lion. I am Concord, destined to slice through stratosphere, to rise above and stay there. I am still carrying this cage, but it will not slow my speed or crash this plane. Cool. So I'm gonna read two more potentially relatively happy poems or nice poems. So this next poem and the poem after it are from a, in fact, the next three poems, and I think I'll just do the next three poems, are from a collection that, or a pamphlet that um, is out at a couple of places for consideration. So we'll see what they say. And it's basically just about, um, predominantly about women who have impacted my life, basically. Um, and this one is a story from my honeymoon. Don't fall. Your squeal is the only thing that shook my balance. It's not like I'd die. I stand on Ponte del Diablo on the Venetian island of Torcello, the devil's bridge. Your words pull me into memories of how you missed the seat at the cinema when we were kids. Fell through clouds of popcorn and curse words. I remember you missed me when you disappeared on family holidays. No joy without us. The image of you walking the aisle, the way you paused as your veil slipped, how I tilted as the globe stopped, rotating to observe as a room held their breath. I have been falling since we first met. All I fear now is resurfacing. I would rather be fished out of the water than a fish out of water. I am swimming, gills full of you, breathing deep. Who cares if the bridge has no rails? Cool. And uh, this next poem is dedicated to my sister. She's never heard this poem. She knows nothing about this poem. And it is about my sister um, looking after my mum when my mum was ill. It's called Atritina for Asbestos Hands. You must have the toughest hands in the world. We laugh when we call you asbestos hands. You pull trays from ovens, no gloves, and never drop them. My whole life, I never saw you drop anything 
until I saw you drop everything as our world plummeted and you reached to catch her in those hands. Now, when one of us reaches and hands you something, even if it's the slightest drop, you say it's too much, like you don't deserve the world, like your hands never let your world drop to catch ours. Thank you. I've also never read that out loud before, and I didn't realise that it would do that. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, I don't know why I'm apologising. I'm not sorry. It's cool. Um, and the final poem, also from that collection, is called Muse. This is a sad poem, sadder than that one. Uh, Muse is dedicated to a poet called Leon Priestnell from Birmingham, who was a very good friend of mine who passed away earlier this year. And he wrote a poem called Taxi Girl, um, which was about a girl that he saw in a taxi and he wrote this really cool and weird poem about it and this poem is inspired by the girl that inspired that poem and it's called Muse. I saw a man become a meme and a man become more. Did you know? Looking from the back seat of a taxi on Bennett's Hill, eyes piercing smoke as it left his lips, did you know he would talk of you how he spoke of Lupe Fiasco verses? He told me I would be as inspired as he was, and I denied it. Denial is a trilby half-cocked on a head of self-doubt. Superficial surface-level sheathing so the silhouette of spectres that sway behind your eyes stay secret. A wallet stuffed with insecurities. When life will never pay you what you're worth. I ask if you saw the video he made, you say you saw me crying. And I denied it. Denial is a whirlwind at the world's end. When you are running from reality, you will run to anything or nothing. Running from reality is like running from your backpack. Speed does not increase distance, only desperation. I asked if you have seen the man that you inspired. You say he's gone. And I denied it. And I denied it. And I denied it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Casey, for it joining us. It end up sad. I always have to go to sad poems in the end. It's important, I suppose. Um, poetry that makes us feel, it helps us get through things, doesn't it? Um, we were talking to, to Jericho Brown recently about, and, and we're like a booker, about where you turn, when you turn to poetry, at, at moments of crisis, moments of upheaval, um, things like, COVID and, and what's gone on in America in the last in the last 12 months um, and how I'm told reliably informed that 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 sales of poetry rocketed during that time um, and I don't think it's it was unnoticed by anybody that when Joe Biden was inaugurated there was a poet reading um, and and she garnered an awful lot of attention um, so yeah it, it really helps you get through difficult moments and it's I suppose part of the reason why Matthew and myself have, have forced ourselves along here tonight. Okay, um, we have come to the end of our list, um, but I'm perfectly happy to read the game um, and to invite anybody else who might want to. Before I do, before I do, Casey, where where are we able to get your books from? Sorry. Well, they're available direct from which publishers? I don't think I quite um, So uh, Adjusted, uh, which is my first collection, is with Verve Poetry Press. And um, Please Do Not Touch will be available with Burning Guy Books, um, but it's currently available for pre-order from my website. Right. Okay. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so, like I say, uh, if anybody is happy to read again, do you want to, do you want to let me know? That's a Veronica with a hand in the air, Steve and Veronica, Matthew. Veronica, Steve and Matt, yep. <laughs> Okie dokie. And, and Casey specifically asked me to read another Johnny Clark, and I've been and found one just for you. Okay. So, um, Veronica. Yeah, I'm going to read a poem. Just give me one second. I'm just pulling it up. If someone wants to go first, that's perfectly fine. I just got to pull it up. <laughs> In that case, Steve or Matthew? 
Are either of you ready to go, Matthew? Okay. Hiya. Right. Um, I've got I've got a poem here called Prisoner of Skies. Um, and it's from the forthcoming Black Bow um, um, edition, which Alan has also has uh, poems in. And the uh, book is, is, is called Dark Confessions. Prisoner of Skies. Observe its slip, watch it run. Waters curve, gleam and gush. Bubbles glug at the pitted rock, drawing silt, wheeling seed. Hear the churn, the rising churn, the swell and boom and surge of surf. Drifts of waste barrel, wreck on coast bones, gulls arc on airy chains, columns of cloud bank in the glare. Tide marks lay snaked, in bronze. As voyagers we circle, locked in light, I sit grounded, a prisoner of skies. Thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. I am so excited by that collection. So, <laughs> so excited. Can't wait. What's it about? For anybody who doesn't know, what inspired it? Okay, well, basically, we, we um, started off on the theme of freedom and rapture. Um, when we got poems in, when we had hundreds and hundreds of poems in, um, there, was, there was a real split. There was freedom, rapture, poems based on joy, ecstasy, all that kind of stuff. And then equally, there were a lot of poems on, uh, I, you know, I guess, lockdown, COVID poems poems about sort of uh, containment, isolation, despair, but incredibly vivid. So we split it, and this is our first one, our first one, Dark Confessions, but that will break out into freedom and rapture, which is, is going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely crazy when it comes out. And, and it will be crazy because it, it features uh, Alan Parry's poetry. Um, yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, and they are amazing poems, absolutely amazing. I can't remember what it's like you've even accepted. No. Um, I forget. I know I, I remember writing them because about 17 came up once, but I can't remember which ones I sent in. We'll see. I hope it's as warmly received as you think it will be. My work, that is. I'm sure the book will be. <laughs> Steve. Yeah, um, yeah, before we go on, yeah, it's... Um, but what Case said about Leon is, I, he was a lovely guy. I didn't know him that well, but all the times I saw him, he really kind of touched me. And I'm sure he didn't even realise how many people he did. It. And that's uh, Case's book, Adjusted, on the Poetry Press, <laughs> Product Placement. Excellent, brilliant book. Part of a thriving West Midlands poetry scene. Um, there's lots of people referring today as the teachers and stuff. I, sent, I spent a little bit of time as a teacher, and I was always amazed by the names you got called as a teacher. Uh, some good, some cruel, some very witty, but the strangest name thing I was ever called was the day a student called me dad. One day a student called me dad. A slip of some sort, sleepless, soft Freudian. So I said, well, what are we having for tea tonight? Beans, came his quick, kind reply. And I thought of a table set for three, four, maybe more, and a mantelpiece altered with Father's Day cards with cricket games, sailing ships and ironic pipes, I hoped. And underneath that mucky metal metaphor for the nuclear family, poker, brush and tongs, companion set in the fireplace below. And on the fridge, a clumsy magnetic gallery of places I've never been, and on the stove, a whole dozen fish fingers, all scallops, we might have been posh, in the clockwork face of the frying pan. Outside in the shed, too many bikes, all the wrong angles. The shed, that workshop for a rite of passage when his or her young greasy thumbs were tough enough to get the punctured tyre back over the rim without my help or without trapping the snake in inner tube. A fella conspirator 
was we sneaked out bowls of still water from band hygienic kitchens to help us look for giveaway bubbles. And then the bell went, the class emptied, the desk was cleared, I packed my bag, the table unset for just one awaited. That. Thank you very much, Steve. Thank you very much. Veronica, do you want to read next? Or do you want to close? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I've got one, and um, this poem is the one that was very fortunately chosen in um, the most recent issue for Resign. It's called Our Women. I thought I'd read that one for you guys today. Um, yeah, so just it's about the women in my family, particularly on my mother's side. So um, yeah, I'll read it for you right now. The women in my family have always just known things. They can sense things before they happen the way some animals can smell fear. Now it is time I come into my own to follow in the footsteps of my grandmother and her mother before her and my own mother. I can feel it percolating in there somewhere deeper than my bones, a sensation that's building, my soul starts tingling, and I know now I'm wise enough to understand it for what it is, something new and beautiful and precarious, something feared by others looking in. But I've begun to embrace it, this inheritance of mine, this knowledge our women possess will no longer scare me for I've tapped into it recently once or twice. Do not underestimate this wisdom we've nourished for years and decades and centuries because you might not know it, but we already know what you will say before you speak the words. I smile my most flatteringly wicked grin. You have no idea what's coming, do you? But I sure as hell do, and there's no stopping it. So, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's wonderful to meet new people, see new voices coming through, and it's really exciting that you're only just starting out on that journey. Uh, thanks Thank again you. for joining us. Um, I wasn't going to read another, but Casey asked for it specifically, uh, another Johnny Clark one. Um, I think I said uh, I, I saw him first when I was, I was 14, 1997. Um, but I didn't meet another real John Cooper Clark fan apart from me, Dad, and he doesn't count until about 2004, 2005. Um, and the other man uh, who I who, who was a big fan, uh, he's not with us anymore, unfortunately. Um, but this poem, we used to work together at a holiday camp, and I remember him bringing in on our night shifts together. I think we used to work six at night till four o'clock in the morning. Um, horrible shifts but he had a cassette tape remember them Steve we were talking about that before haven't we um, of, of a junk of I think it's Snap Crackle and Pop I think the tape was called and, and Johnny Clark uh, performed this on it and I, I remember his name was Kev he used to dance he used to dance while, while this one was read uh, it's called Salome Maloney I'm not going to be able to read it anywhere near this quickly because I can't scroll down um, as quick as needs to be, but I'll give it I'll give it a go. I was walking down Oxford Road, dressed in what they called the mode. I could hear them spinning all their smash hits at the mecca of the modern dance, the Ritz. My feet fox trotted, my shoulders did the shimmy. The bouncer on the door said a gimme, gimme, gimme. I gave them the tickets, they gave me the shits. No wealthy arguments in the Ritz. Standing by the sick machine, who did I see in Lurex and Terralene? She hypnotised me, I asked her a name, she said it's Salome Maloney, Queen of the Ritz. Lacquered in a beehive, a barn that didn't budge. Wet look lips, she smiled as sweet as fudge. She had a number on her back and sequins on her tits. The sartorial requirements of females in the Ritz. A man making like Fred Astaire, complete with spats and tails. A Douglas Fairbanks moustache, dirty fingernails. Who snide innuendo was a subtle at the blitz, walked off with 
slow me in the greasy little mitts, standing in the dandruff light, trying to get pissed among the headlights, old spice brute and body mist. How can she be seen dead dancing with that tit? Uh, being slow me Maloney, El Supremo of the rich tables flew, bottles broke, the bouncers shouted lumber, the dummy got too chummy in a Bing Crosby number. The bouncers said it's suicide, trying to get your mitts on Salome Maloney, the queen of the Ritz. When the ambulances came, she was lying on the deck. She'd fell off her stiletto wheels and broke her fucking neck. The band threw down their instruments, the management threw fit. She's dead, she don't bring... She don't bring the business to the Ritz. The over-21s night said it was a shame. The divorcee club will never be the same. Joe Loss killed himself and Vic, Vic Sylvester quit when the death done drama did away with the Ritz. When the last waltz withered and the quick step stopped and the ladies, excuse me, was permanently blocked. And Mecca make a living selling little bits of Salome Maloney in the wreckage of the Ritz. There we go. <laughs> Got through it. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves tonight. Um, it's been really, really important for me to be here. I've said it a couple of times. Um, thanks to everybody for joining, for sharing some poems, uh, all these different styles that we've had tonight, um, some hard-hitting stuff, some that's a little bit frothier and lighter. Um, it's wonderful to be able to pay tribute to a, a, a couple of people um, and to be able to, to push Stuart's book. Um, to introduce the the world to Casey Bailey, those that don't know him already, um, can't wait to get working with you and see what you what you can do for us, and and um, and to give everybody a platform to share their work because you're all fabulous poets and and more people should know about you. Elizabeth, do you have something to say to finish? I do. I have a firstly a happy birthday to you for Sunday. <laughs> Um, I'm sure everybody wishes you to have a very happy birthday. Um, so yes, <laughs> I won't calculate your age based off the fact you're 14 in 1997. Uh, I can just add 14 to my age and then we can work it out. Um, but yeah, it's been really lovely having everyone here tonight, and it, it was great to have the tribute to Di as well. We had published him in Reside multiple times, um, a wonderful poet, and it's just been lovely to see new faces here tonight as well as old ones, and we hope you come to future events like this in, in, in next month and, and in the future coming months as well, because it's always great to have you all here. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you. Um, this will Very be nice. available via YouTube, then via our website. Um, we'll share you all, thank you all, and we'd appreciate you doing the same. Feel free to stick your books in the comments, all that type of thing. Um, try and make it a, a, a big hit for everybody involved. Take Cheers care. Out. Thank you. Not no at problem, all. Matthew. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah.